January 9th, uh, tonight's presentation is the budget snapshot. We'll be back again to talk to the board on February 13th, March 13th, March 27th, when we expect to, um, to present the superintendent's proposed budget. Some dates beyond that, April 17th, nominating petitions are due to the district clerk and the board would be uh, adopting the 23-24 budget. On May 8th uh, would be the budget hearing here at Central Office, and on May 16th would be the budget vote down at the high school. Uh, tonight we're gonna look at guiding principles, review of our current approved budget and program initiatives, review a little bit about financial history, look at our reserves, our budget development goals are known and unknown changes at this point. It is still early. Last year we had our first budget meeting in February. However, due to the, the board meetings, we've moved it up uh, and we're doing it in January now. Our next steps and community and board input. So first, Ms. Avila is going to talk about our guided principles. So it's really um, important that, every, that our purpose is to line everything we do with our principles, district mission, and goals and just wanted to ground us in our mission statement. The mission of Valley Central School Community is to develop responsible and productive members of society in a safe and an innovative environment where students are motivated to think critically, communicate effectively, and achieve excellence in active, active partnership with the community and knowledgeable and dedicated staff. We saw an example of that today when our students came and were able to uh, share their thinking critically as well as be responsible to actually portray some important people that they have studied as well as um, really communicate effectively. And so we wanna make sure that our mission is kept alive. And as we review the budget snapshot today, I want you to just be grounded in our mission and district goals. Mission statement alive and support us in reaching our, our goals. And our core goals that we are focused on is increasing student achievement, attracting and retaining knowledgeable dedicated staff, serve as a, cron a cornerstone of both the community and really maintain and improve the facilities to support goals one to three. And we just had a conversation about improving our facilities. And as we look at our values, we're grounding it in, our, in safety, the future and ready schools curriculum and instruction, and we'll have a little more conversation around that particular programs, and then really thinking of our mental health, social and emotional learning, and our future ready schools facilities. So I'll give you a quick review. Our expenditures and encumbrances were less than the final budget expenditures, expenditures by 8.7%. That is a little bit higher than we would like it to be. Last year we uh, largely, largely resulted from savings in transportation and special education. Last year, when we created the budget, uh, Jackie and I, we took a good look at this area and we actually reduced those budgets um, from last year to this year. So the, the total in the 23 fiscal budget is lower. But just to kind of give you an example how things swing so fast, so fast here, the special education budget is now um, an area that we have some concern. Um, you know, just one example, um, Ms. Butler had shared that this year we've had 10 students move into the Valley Central School District already with out-of-district um, placements. So those are, you know, high-cost um, programs to the district, things that we're just out of control. Um, it's the incoming preschoolers or the incoming kindergartners that may need some extra attention um, in the coming years. So in the general fund, actual revenues were uh, a bit more than final budgeted revenues by 2.34% kind of in a range that, that we would expect to be in. Um, the current budget is $116,600,000. The voters approved that uh, almost 64%, 737 in favor to 417 opposed. The budget the budget increase uh, was 3.92%. The tax levy increase 1.76%, which was well below our tax cap of 4.44%. Here's just revenue trends uh, overall, historically speaking. Um, our district, like most districts in the southern part of the state, the local share uh, does end up becoming a higher percentage of the revenue overall. Um, this year, our state source or our state aid is about 38% of our budget. Expenditure trends, this um, looks at all of our uh, expenses in categories, and our district inst uh, instruction is about 56 
percent of our budget, and a large portion of our budget uh, benefits, health and benefits, uh, 26 percent. Our current budget project program initiatives, Marianne's going to talk a little bit about that. So it's really nice that we talk about the wonderful things that we're doing at Valley Central, and as um, Mrs. Avila stated, it's always about the kids. They have 13 years here in Valley Central School District, and it's our, our opinion that we really need to be giving them our, their, our absolute best. And so um, at the elementary level, you'll know that we have stellar ELA programs and math programs. Those are supported with this budget. Our science and technology, engineering, arts, and math have been continuously um, upgraded and updated since I would say the 2019 school year. Our science labs um, are in great shape. Um, our kindergarten to fifth graders are working with engineering, robotics, coding. Um, I'm not going to go into everything in detail because I want to um, be able to, to respect your time and also we can go into more depth later. Um, I did, one thing I did for you today is I shared all of our curricula with you and also shared that with the Valley Central staff. Also Patty and Melanie were kind enough to put all of our programs in the high school and the middle school on our webpage so that there's a description of every single course that we offer so you, at any time you want to take a look at that. Um, but we have continually added to our professional development <coughs> on both in ELA and math. We are so fortunate to have our own math and ELA coaches and we do a great job of vetting professional learning in both ELA and math and bring that to our teachers. Um, in social studies this year, we have spent thousands of dollars on expanding our classroom libraries to meet our social studies curriculum and also to ensure that our libraries are more diverse and show a more equitable representation of the families in our districts in our district and our social and emotional program the Yale Ruler program we are very fortunate to have Stephanie Minio who goes to every single elementary school and provides um, in-classroom um, lessons on mindfulness and recognizing your feelings and being able to regulate those feelings um, we also have diversity equity inclusion training with Dr. LeBlanc as well as Jess uh, as well as um, Zella Curland we also have just recently contracted with Youth Communications that is coming in to do um, diversity and equity training across the um, across all the levels. At our middle school level, we have a comprehensive academic program, and one of the things that we've seen in Valley Central is that our students, as they get older, do report that they're less engaged. So if you look at that curriculum um, that we've been offering over the last three years at the middle school, we have offered um, very interesting electives to try to gain their attention. Books Alive is one of them, literary villains, so that they can um, be more engaged. Esports, which I know some of you know about, which is, um, is really growing. Reading research, got comics and graphic novels, music technology, sketching your way through art. These are all very new courses that are um, at the middle school level. We also have one of the best um, hands-on module, module-based technology programs in all of the county in our seventh grade. If you ever have, you've been in that room where they are um, every day building and learning and problem solving. And the same at the um, middle school level with social and emotional, the Yale Ruler. They also have a new program called Check and Connect where our at-risk stu students are um, assigned a mentor and they meet regularly um, before and after school um, to increase their attendance, their um, academics, as well as their, to decrease their behavioral issues. We also added some after school social and emotional clubs at the middle school and high school level that have been very well attended. And at the high school level, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but um, we have a stellar program. I did meet today with the business department to um, learn a little bit more about our, our work-based learning program. It has increased to 15 students. Um, with, with that program, they need to do some seat work, but if they're working out in the community, um, they can earn up to one credit during the school year by the work that they're doing out in the community. And we're working to see how we can move that over into the trades. There also is a program where, based on the courses they take at the high school, such as the carpentry introduction course and the aviation course, that they can earn points um, in trade and get a job in the trades, and they can actually earn more credits that way as well. Um, we're very proud of our science research program. We have contracted with Mike Flynn this year, who is actually working across the K-12 um, to help us to improve our mathematics instruction. 
And you can see that we've added so many um, electives. We are trying to make sure that those electives are filled. We're gonna be looking at our scheduling this year to ensure that we're doing our best to make sure that those classes have as many students taking the opportunity as possible. Okay. All right, thank you. Currently, 14 districts in Orange County have spent more per pupil than, than Valley Central does. Historically, um, you can see the budget to budget increases in the average since 2013 of 2.62%. Uh, tax levy, historically as well, 2.5% uh, has been the average since 2013. Uh, one uh, important thing to note, I think it was in the 2018 year and then also last year were two years that the district was below the tax cap. So two out of the last five years, we've been below that tax uh, cap number and uh, we'll see if uh, we may be able to make it three out of six um, this year. Here's uh, appropriations to balance the budget. Um, fund balance on the left, appropriated reserves on the right. This um, kind of when I stepped into this position uh, in the 2019 year, we were talking about the need to reduce that reliance on fund balance and reserves in the budget. And we have um, we've done so. We've gotten to the point where last year of this 2.9 million dollars that was appropriated into the fund, um, into the budget uh, from fund balance, we want to use that for one shot expenditures, right? Things that are not expected to recur year over year. So of that 2.9 million, 1.5 was an expenditure to borrow less on the current capital project, which creates a savings going forward. Also, uh, Ryan was able to get two trucks and a van that he needed to get. And um, we also used fund balance to do those capital outlay projects to replace the storefront here at Central Office and also the scoreboard at the uh, high school stadium. So using fund balance wisely is, is certainly a goal of ours and I believe we are in a position where we're now able to do that. Here's uh, an overall summary of our reserves. Of note, this is that, that capital reserve that, that Jason is talking about that we would be utilizing for the uh, upcoming capital project if, if we do get one. You heard us talk about the debt service reserve. We worked with Jason and his office to come up with a plan to appropriate those monies towards um, future budgets to offset expenditures there. Uh, here's a high level look at our fund balance, our overall fund balance. Uh, 2021 was, is on the top, 2022 is on the bottom. You see last year our fund balance did increase a little bit. Uh, this restricted column from 11.8 to 16.9, uh, a lot of that is our reserves. And of course the corresponding reduction in the assigned amount of fund balance on this side. Um, of note, just the school lunch fund, I'll just share uh, some good news. So we're in the process of wrapping up the internal audit uh, for this year, which did focus on the school lunch program. Um, in our uh, exit interviews with the auditor, um, he said that the school lunch program here at Valley Central um, between the, the cafeteria office itself, Eleanor, and the business office here at Central Office, which is mostly Jackie, is the best run uh, food service program he has seen. So we have some pretty good accolades in that department. Here we go into the 23-24 budget development. Um, so what are our guidelines and goals at this point? Well, obviously we want to maintain our existing programs, uh, adhere to the tax cap, carefully manage the fund balance and reserves, as I've mentioned, uh, reallocate resources where appropriate, and address facilities needs. All things I think we've done fairly well of over the last few years. Um, what are our known changes at this point? We are projecting a stable enrollment uh, with an increase in special education needs. Uh, so more to come on that as we go through the budget development process. We have a very good idea of what our debt service will be at this point. Tax levy growth factor, which is the, one of the factors that goes into the tax cap calculation. That number has been released by the state. For us, Valley Central, it is 1.89%. Teacher's retirement system rate, um, that is going to go down a tick next year. And our ERS, our employee retirement system rate, I believe is going a tick up. Uh, we also know our pilot agreements, which I think Jackie's calculated is going to be slightly decrease um, from last year. Our unknown changes at this point, uh, state aid. I know you said I think this, uh, the governor has the state of the state uh, addressed tomorrow, so we may have some information after that as far as what our state aid would be. 
Um, we did get a significant increase last year. This is supposed to be the second and final year of that significant uh, increase. Our allowable uh, growth factor, that is the number, that is the 2% number that, the state, that you will hear referred to when we talk about the 2% tax cap. That number is set by the state based off of CPIU, I believe at a certain point in time. Um, that number has not been released by the state. However, we do expect it would be 2% this year based on uh, CPIU. Coming up into the next year, we have two unsettled contracts, the CSEA unit and also the confidential unit, which is the unit of the, uh, uh, the staff here at Central Office, absent the administrators. Uh, retirements, we, are, <clears throat> we have a pretty good idea of who our teacher retirements are at this time. However, we're still waiting for the other employees of the district and the administrators. Special education placements, placements they come uh, together over the next few weeks and months. Our uh, BOCES administration costs, we're not sure what they will be at this point. Our health insurance, um, the OU health plan, uh, that rate should be set, I, I believe, at our meeting next week, or we will have an idea at that point what the rate will be. <coughs> of note, the NYSHIP health plan increased almost 15%. Um, going into next year, it's a, a fairly, actually a very significant increase. Um, the OU Health Plan, which is run by the districts that are members of that. Um, most uh, districts, the Assistant Superintendent for Business sits on that as a board member. I sit on the, the plan as a board member to represent Valley Central. Um, I do not expect our increase to be 15% uh, next year. And then one thing that will impact the district's budget next year is the BOCES capital project that was passed. Um, the voters approved it. So at this point, we have no choice but to absorb those costs. Uh, preliminary impact is uh, going to be um, between five and six hundred thousand dollars is what that impact will be for us. Our next steps, so tonight, and I know it's late, but we'll take any uh, comments and questions that you may have. Um, public input, um, the public can reach out to us however they would like to. Call, email, come to public board meetings. Um, and let us know their thoughts. Administration input, so we have our uh, cabinet meeting coming up in the next week, and then also we have our one-on-one -on -one budget meeting scheduled with all the directors and the principals. We'll continue to resolve our unknowns, finalize personnel, and then the superintendent's board of ed uh, initiative to, will be presented to the board on February 13th. Uh, here we are, just the, the calendar again, looking forward. Just remember our next uh, budget discussion with the board, uh, or presentation to the board, will be on February 13th. And given the Board of Education goals and DC values, what specific suggestions do you have for building the budget? <laughs> Actually, I have, a, I have a question on the Bozes Capital. Yep. So, how what will that look like to the voters and taxpayers when we build our budget? Like, is it going to be ten dollars and we're going to show them two dollars in bonuses, or like, what what is that going to look like? I'm going to take on Jackie right now for her. Maybe it's separated just so that they know, you know, how much is the Village Central increase and how much is um, bonuses component to it. Um, it was voted, so. Um, you know, we have to move forward with financing the project. Yeah. I think we're going to have to really communicate that. Because I think, I mean, people voted it passed, but I'm guessing that a lot of people do not know. Yeah. And do not know the impact that it's going to have to us. When we have that exact number, what it will be and the impact on uh, the district, we'll make sure we build it into one of those slides to, to let you know. Mm -hmm. 